a bright day image. There's nothing in this scene that should be pure white. So I think that the exposure, according to the histogram, is pretty good. Just to play with it, I can take that exposure down a little bit. We can see where the histo goes. You can see it pushes to the left, bring it up a little bit, and pretty quickly it pushes way far to the right. And so you can see there, it looks way brighter than it probably should. But I'm just gonna reset it and go back because I think the exposure is actually pretty locked on on there. Let's go to brightness and play with that a little bit. And if I can bring my brightness up a little and see this, this does tend to get a little bit washed out in the shadows. So definitely not a, a favorite way to, to brighten things up. Um, I would use brightness cautiously. I think generally you're gonna find a better result out of exposure. Contrast is gonna stretch out the histogram, making my brights brighter and my darks darker, which can be an easy way to get a quick extra little bit of pop out of your scene in there. So going the opposite direction gets really, really flat. Bring it back up again. We just make those shadows darker and the highlights brighter. But be careful, right? You can very easily start to lose detail in the shadows a little bit too much in there. Um, this is actually looking pretty good. I don't think I've done too bad of a job of uh, uh, not really crunching the shadows here. And if we look at the histogram, well, you can see I'm, I'm close, right? I'm close in there. It's The red channel is possibly getting clipped at the very, very bottom of that, but I think it's acceptable. It might be a little bit, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. It's a little bit too much to take a little bit of contrast out of there. I don't wanna get crazy. Highlights, if you wanna bring highlights down, there's really nothing in here to worry about. There's no highlights, but if we look at the clouds in there, I can bring those down a little bit and that's gonna be pretty separate from the rest of the scene in there. Shadows, I wanna bring those up. So we clearly have some shadowed areas in here, but again, I think they're okay. I don't wanna bring them up too much in there. It's gonna flatten things out, make it look a little bit unrealistic, so I'll leave that alone. And then your whites, the, the very top of the spectrum, you want to make that a little brighter, a little darker. That's your white levels of the histogram or blacks. And the blacks is often my preferred way to add contrast. So if you're looking at a histogram, let's say black to white, doesn't matter which is which. Anyway, you're looking at a histogram, contrast essentially takes both ends of it and stretches them out or compresses them together. Doing just blacks will just move the black end, just whites will move just the white end of that. So you have more control. So if you're taking your contrast and it's going too much, you're going, well, I like the way the shadows look, but the highlights are getting too bright, um, or vice versa, the highlights are getting too bright, but the shadows are, or the highlights are good, but the shadows are too dark, then this even contrast adjustment may not be the right one. So you may want to switch over and grab blacks, whites, and move them independently. So you can move just a little bit of whites, a lot of blacks, or you know, whatever it is that works for you. So in fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to reset my contrast, double tap that, to reset it, and that'll go to my shadows and bring them down a little bit. And I'm gonna be very careful while I'm looking at it, looking at the image, make sure I'm not getting too dark in there. See, if I go really far, then you can see what happens very quickly. Look at the histogram there, it's just slamming stuff up against the side. My shadow details in the building over here, totally gone. Um, definitely not, not good in there, but I wanna bring it down a little bit. So bring it down just a touch in there, and then I'll take my whites, and maybe I can bring that up a little bit higher so I got some room to grow in there before things start to clip. So I definitely have moved my, you can see my highlights, or my whites rather, I've moved 63. Oh, I was playing with shadows. I wonder I did the wrong one. Let's go to blacks and pull that down. There we go, that's better. Um, and get that to a darker, darker point, black point. Let's do just a little bit. So then my blacks are at minus 17, my whites are at 63. So very, oops, didn't mean to tap that. Well, I did that, come back here. Um, there you go. Whites at 63, blacks at minus 17, so a very different stretch than I did moving just the contrast lighter. Okay, looking pretty good, looking pretty awesome. Let's move on to the next one. So we'll close out light and open up detail. So detail, we get into some fun ones. Clarity is one of those sliders that I think the first it ever showed up in was Lightroom. I'm pretty sure they had it first. And it was one of those that it's, it's like an awesome slider and it can do some really, really great things and it can be very easily overused and you know that you saw, and you may have done it yourself, uh, seen images that were just clarity taken to 11 and you're going, okay, that's a bit much. I don't really need to see every texture in the wall. Like it's just too much. But what it does is it looks, it goes into the, um, it's a localized contrast effectively. You're going into the midtones and enhancing the contrast in the midtones in a very, very nice, precise way, but it can be overdone. So if I take this image and I go to clarity and I crank it all the way up, I, you might at first look, oh, that's really cool, it looks really great, but you look closely and, in fact, let me not do zoom in that way, let me zoom in normally here. And I'm looking at my zoom position, it's the only place that I've seen it, but in the little, this little widget. You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash member.